Welcome back. Welcome back. You tune back into the fix. Your source for faith infused hip hop, R and B and poetry right here on Sirius XM channel 154. Holy culture radio. And it's time for our spiritual detox. And, uh, listen, um, I've been waiting to talk with this young lady, this listen, preaching powerhouse for a while. Um, I, I first noticed her from her preaching. And then I got caught up with, uh, yeah, she said she got a few bars too as well. If you need some bars and all the little choreography she does within her, uh, videos and everything. So, um, that was a blessing. So it's, it's a, it's a two for one for me. We talk all the time on just being able to minister, um, mm-hmm. on a different level. And, and I, I've heard some of her sermonettes and I, I feel like she just, you know, she speaks the truth. Um, of course she speaks that word. But it's different, and, and I think she relates to a different audience that listens to her. But listen, without further ado, help me welcome in a super talented preacher, evangelist, uh, recording artist, author. She does it all, Miss Maddie Ray. What's going on, sis? Uh, thank you so much, DJ Focus. This is such an honor. It's an honor to be on here with you, and I appreciate just all your kind, encouraging words. Really appreciate that, and I'm really just grateful for what God is doing right now through my ministry. I love being able to to preach and to write books and to do music and to dance, sing, rap, all that fun stuff. It's really such a blessing, and it's an honor to be able to talk to you, uh, talk with you about all these things and have a good conversation and hopefully inspire some people out there that are listening or watching. Oh, absolutely. They'll be inspired. So give us the, give us the, the, the short story on uh, of the, the short backstory of how you develop your own personal relationship with Christ. Yeah. So I'm a PK. I'm a pastor's kid. I've grown up in church my whole life. My parents are pastors out here uh, in Waukegan, Illinois. That's where I'm from. I'm a little bit north of Chicago area. And uh, my parents have a church out here called Church of Joy. And I grew up in it my whole life. They founded our ministry over 26 years ago. I'm 24. So I've grown up in it. I gave my life to Christ when I was actually around four years old is when I gave my life to Christ. I remember we were like watching a Jesus movie and I think somebody was going to hell and my little four-year-old heart just knew I was not trying to go there. And so I gave my life to Christ at four. And I was, again, always a part of my parents' ministry, doing ministry. But I really think around 12, which sometimes you hear a lot of people say that if they gave their life to Christ young, that there was kind of another moment that it just became even that much more real. And I think for me around 12 is when I really consecrated my life to God. And I really... um I started to just take serious my own personal relationship with the Lord. During that time, our church was really going through a revival, um, a genuine revival where we were just having like encounters with God like we had never experienced before. And so for me, watching that between the age of about 10 to 12, it really started stirring my heart. And so at 12, um, I, I share this a lot that I made a vow with God, a vow to consecrate my life to him, to say, God, my life is yours. I will not use my life for anything else. I won't do anything else with my life outside of what your plan is, your purpose and your will. And that's what I've been doing ever since I was 12. At the age of 12, I also kind of started my ministry, which at first I didn't know it was going to turn into this whole ministry that it is today. Um But my parents' church, we really did a lot to reach young people, to reach kids and teens. And my dad had a really big heart for that locally where we were at, reaching thousands of young people every single week. So I grew up in that. And at 12, I got to do more to be a part of that. I had like a kid's TV show that we were doing, started doing some songs here or there, was a part of an all-girls rap group. And so kind of started, you know, getting into all of that, which really showed me um, my purpose. So from that moment of really making that vow again of consecration to God to then seeing some of the gifts and talents that were coming out, it really started culminating into, into what my um, true purpose and calling was going to be on my life that I'm now living in today. That's amazing. You know, growing up as a PK, you know, is there one misconception you can kind of debunk, uh, you know, growing up as a PK that, you know, we always hear stories of, you know, this and that as, you know, growing up as PK. What's, what's one thing, if you do even have one yeah. thing that you can say, uh, you know, kind of like a misconception. No, that's not true. Yeah. Well, I, I love talking about being a PK and I try to help as many PKs as I can because I know – when you grow up as a pastor's kid in the church, you see the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, you you get to see all of it, and you go through a lot. And PKs are really challenged, you know. And I think, 
I, I think the biggest thing that PKs are challenged with that maybe PKs face as a misconception, which I'll share briefly on, is, you know, a lot of people think that, oh, well, you're just perfect. You have it all together. You know, that that's a big one that PKs face. But I think, you know, a misconception with that that I think that I think even PKs or those that grow up in the church really have to overcome is that when you're faced with that kind of viewpoint of how people view you, a lot of times PKs wind up rebelling because they go, I can't meet that expectation. I'm not perfect. I can't meet that standard. So they wind up rebelling and saying, listen, this is too much pressure. This is too much expectation. I'm out of here. And you see that a lot with young people that grow up in the church, especially PKs. As soon as they're 18, they're like, I'm done. I'm going to do my own thing. This has been a lot growing up in it. And I think for me, you know, I'm grateful that my parents really helped me to feel a part and to find my purpose in the church that my parents were pastoring, where when I got older, I didn't want to walk away. Or even if people thought like, oh, Maddie, you know, you think you're this or that, you know, I really decided to actually say, I actually want to live this out. I don't want to rebel against this. I actually want to do what's right. I want to be this example. I want to show others that you can live your life for Christ and that it is possible. So I think that was my way of saying, I don't want to go the typical stereotypical route of a PK. I want to walk this thing out and really see what God can do with my life if, as he's put me in this position as a PK. So I try to encourage PKs the best way that I can. It's not an easy position to be in. You see a lot with the church, but I do say this, the church is the most perfect, imperfect place you could ever be. It only becomes imperfect when we walk through the doors because we're imperfect, but it's God's design. It's God's house. He intends for us to be there. And if you have good people that are helping you and helping give you understanding of being in the church, it, it really can be a great experience.